I've been recently messing around on ChatGPT, which is an open AI robot that data mines the interwebs and uses some algorithms to spit out its, quote, ideas, unquote. So being a camera guy, I asked, what's the best camera to buy under $100? I was thinking it would spit out a top brand like Canon, Nikon, or Sony, but... <gasps> Hmm? I went on to eBay, bought it for $40, and then waited for it to arrive. I think in order to say whether it's the best camera under $100, we have to identify some ground rules as to what will make it the best. Number one, it needs to have really good picture quality. For the price, that's a big caveat. Number two, it needs to have adequate video. Number three, it needs to be easy to use. And number four, and perhaps most important, it needs to beat out my top three cameras under $100. And once we have that, we can make a final decision. Is this Kodak camera actually the best camera under $100? Okay, first thoughts, it looks very small and compact, like it could easily fit into a pocket. Just examining the camera, it looks like it has a micro USB slot on the side. The cable was not included, but if you have any micro USB cable, it looks like it would work. Just a handful of buttons on the side of the LCD screen. It's not a touch screen. Looks like it has a fairly limited optical zoom range. According to the front of the camera, it says 4X, which is a 4X optical zoom, which will give you a little bit more than a cell phone camera will do, like an iPhone 12 or 13 without getting into the digital zoom. There's only a handful of major camera manufacturers still making small point and shoot cameras like this, including Kodak. The first of four key things that we're looking for out of this Kodak is good picture quality. My full-time job, as strange as it sounds, is actually selling used digital cameras, which is definitely not the career track I expected as a youngster, but I find it really rewarding. The iPhone has a wider angle of view with its lens and really has enhanced contrast as it boosts these levels in phone and in many cases makes the pixel vibrant, but artificially so. The Kodak did a good job with color accuracy and I think the picture ended up serviceable. The second picture is of a saguaro cactus. The iPhone did a better job with the shadows and you can see more detail on the cactus spine, but the Kodak again, not quite as vibrant, but still a good picture. Some flowering barrel cacti next. Everything is blooming right now in Arizona. It's a really wonderful time to be in the desert. Next, we're moving indoors and testing its ability without as much natural light. This is a nice crisp picture. The key here is to wait for the focus square to turn green. That means that the camera picture is in focus. I used macro mode to take a picture of the fake cactus, and I found that you could get in focus pictures up to about 18 inches away. I couldn't end section number one without talking about the crazy thing that happened when I was out shooting with this camera. I stumbled across a hole with a bunch of cacti littering the entrance, and inside the hole was a rattlesnake. Unfortunately, with the paltry 4X zoom, I was unable to actually zoom in and take a pic. The picture shown here is actually fully zoomed in at 4X. I didn't want to get too close and get bit. So that was a big downer. Wait, how'd that selfie end up here? That mustache was short-lived and it's now gone. The second of the four key metrics we're looking at is adequate video performance. Because these cameras have very small sensors and no image stabilization, the video often won't look as good as an iPhone or a higher end three or four hundred dollar camera. But it's still a nice function to have should you need it. The first clip is my lovely dog River doing his favorite activity of playing fetch and rarely actually giving the ball back. The greens are realistic and true and some jaggedness from the camera trying to catch up with the movement. The second clip is me driving in a car at about 20 miles an hour and oddly following a car that had a large dead cactus on its roof. Don't mind my dirty car, it needs a wash. This is where a lot of cameras have a hard time with the always changing images and lighting changes. Once again, for the price, I thought it was decent and serviceable video output. Number three is that the camera needs to be easy to use. Give it to any person from six to 86, and if they can learn to use it effectively in five minutes, then I'd say it's easy to use. The camera menu of the Kodak FC43 is intuitive and easy. No touchscreen, you can adjust the flash, manually adjust for the scene conditions if you wish, and quickly take videos and photo using the same shutter button. I would actually rank this quite high overall in terms of ease of use. It's no nonsense. Now, I think the only way we're gonna find out if this Kodak PixPro FZ43 is the best camera under $100 is to actually compare it to three other cameras that are some of my favorites under $100. Starting, we have the Nikon Coolpix L340 digital camera. You can see this is quite a bit bigger than the Kodak FZ43 in terms of size. And what do you get for that size? Well, the main difference that you get with this camera is a very big 28X optical zoom. So that means that if you're standing far away, you're able to zoom in 
very closely. And to illustrate that, if I move these guys out of the way and put a little rabbit here, you can see it no, not zoomed out at all. This is how tiny it looks. And when we zoom in, we can get a close-up picture of the rabbit's head. Whereas if we take the Kodak, turn it on, and zoom in all the way, this is the maximum range is 4x. You can see, well, still took, took a nice picture. So if you're looking for a camera that has really good zooming in capabilities or an almost telephoto-like effect, having a camera like a Nikon with a 28x optical zoom could be a good choice. Now, getting a little bit closer to the size of the Kodak is this Nikon Coolpix L32 digital camera. Very similar in size to the Kodak. Almost identical, in fact. You'll notice that the lens position on the Nikon is more in the center of the camera and the Kodak it's a little bit off to the left. The Nikon has a 5x optical zoom versus the Kodak's 4x optical zoom, so very similar in that. And the Kodak is a 16 megapixel camera and this Nikon Coolpix L32 is a 20 megapixel camera. So there's a little bit of added resolution if you're printing out larger pictures. Now let's take a look and see what this camera can do. With this gold rabbit here. So not zoomed out at all. And zoomed in the full 5X. You notice the rabbit is a little bit larger than the Kodak. Okay, took a nice picture. And the third camera that we have that's under $100 is this Canon PowerShot SX170 digital camera. This is a bit in between the Nikon that we looked at first and the Nikon that we looked at second in terms of size. And it's a bit of a hybrid because it offers a, a 16X optical zoom as well as a 16 megapixel resolution. The other main difference in, in this camera is that it uses a rechargeable lithium ion battery instead of AA batteries like all of the other cameras that we've looked at so far. Okay, we're gonna power it on. And we are going to zoom in on the rabbit here. That is at max 16X optical zoom. We may be a little bit too close to focus but you get an idea of how far it can zoom in. Now we've got a handy dandy little postal scale here and we're gonna do a quick weight of all four cameras. The Kodak FC43 with AA batteries and a memory card is less than six ounces. The Nikon L32, also less than six ounces with AA batteries inside. The Nikon L340, the bigger one, almost a pound. And the last one that we tried, the Kodak SX170, is nine ounces. So quite a bit of weight increase if you're looking at the Nikon Coolpix L340. We wrapped up number one, picture quality, number two, video quality, number three, ease of use, and number four, how it compares to the competition. But before I go into my judgment, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. Really means a lot. If you found this helpful, fun, or even funny, please leave a like and consider subscribing for more camera content. Now it's time for judgment on the AI chat GPT's recommendation that this camera is the best camera under $100. It's not. There are a number of other cameras at this price point in the $50 to $100 range that can perform better, give you a wider variety of use, and provide better picture quality than the Kodak. However, this Kodak is not a potato camera. It still takes good pictures, it's very small and compact, and it's not a waste of 50 bucks. Until next time, happy shooting.